These rocks we see for the first time in the history of life, evidence of large life. This is a few million years after the snowball event and something really dramatic has happened. For the first time we've got multi-celled creatures, animals, probably our ancestors lie in these rocks. This thing here, Dickinsonia, can best be described as some kind of a pancake or mat-like worm creature. It doesn't have a proper head, it has what appears to be a gut, very fine segments. But this doesn't explain how the severe planetary freeze could have triggered a leap in evolution. What we do know is that there is a striking coincidence between the rise of oxygen and the end of the snowball. Oxygen levels rise following these global ice ages because of a chemical reaction between ice and sunlight. 650 million years ago, there was no ozone to stop the sun's ultraviolet light hitting the Earth's icy surface. This UV light reacted with water vapor to form hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide remained in the ice for millions of years. But when the ice melted, the hydrogen escaped, and the peroxide converted into water and oxygen. Oxygen reached the same level as we have today. At roughly the same time, the first complex animals appeared. Scientists believe that the high levels of oxygen jump-started the evolution of complex organisms. I think it's possible there was never enough oxygen in the atmosphere until shortly after the last snowball Earth. More oxygen enabled life to become multicellular. A single cell can take up gases and oxygen from water. Oxygen fuses across the cell membrane into the cell. However, when several cells link together, it's harder for oxygen to diffuse from one cell to the next. The pressure of oxygen needs to be higher. You need to have a high enough pressure of oxygen to have a circulatory system bring the oxygen all around the body. After the last snowball Earth, oxygen seems finally to have been high enough to support hundreds, thousands, millions of small early animals on the seafloor. Oxygen turned out to be the linchpin of evolution. The ability to use oxygen enabled life to become dramatically more diverse. Oxygen gives us 20 times more energy, or more than 20 times more energy, uh, than any other thing that we can breathe or that life can breathe. You can have bigger animals, you can have more active organisms, uh, you can have plants that grow and transport liquids from roots to the leaves, and, you know, you can have birds energetic enough to fly. Without oxygen, we would all be slime. A frozen Earth may have given early life a push forward. But if the world were to freeze over again, we'd struggle to survive. We know it's happened several times before. The question is, could it happen again? One factor in our favor is the sun. Over the last 4.8 billion years, it has been getting more and more active as nuclear fusion generates more and more heat. The sun today is about 6% warmer than 650 million years ago. So in the short term, another deep freeze is unlikely. The sun is warmer today. That probably helps us out. But until scientists really understand what causes snowball Earths, I don't think any of us know whether we're in danger or not of a recurrence. But there is one possibility that could result in another global freeze, a shift in the position of the continents. We know their arrangement influences the climate. If the majority of the continents were clustered on or near the equator, the Earth would be more likely to turn into a snowball. Cooling temperatures would cause ice to form in the open ocean of the poles, while weathering would continue on the continents. With more and more carbon locked away, temperatures would plummet. If all the continents were near the equator, then the Earth could get colder and colder and sea ice could form and get to lower and lower latitudes, closer and closer to the equator. Today, our world seems safe. 
Most of the continents are near the poles. But plate movement never stops. At some point, millions of years in the future, the continents may group around the equator once again. I think it's possible someday, if the continents were in a very different position, maybe hundreds of millions of years from now, that we could indeed have another snowball Earth. It's unlikely that mankind will be around to witness another snowball Earth. But the Earth will still be here. And just like it has in the past, our planet will survive and enter a new phase in its extraordinary history.